Welcome back to Faster and Louder. This time we're doing something a lot different. Today I am taking my 2022 Tesla Model Y that is very dirty and I'm going to hook this trailer up to it and we are going to go to California. We're going to go like 400 miles south of Los Angeles, pick up a 90s sport bike um, against my better judgment and we're going to drive all the way back in the same day. So like 800 mile round trip. So uh, this is going to be interesting. <laughs> Okay, it is the morning of and I'm pretty much ready to go here The birds are screaming out here on the trees and everything. I have everything pretty much hooked up and ready to go I think that I'm pretty much set here. I zip tied the Gate so it wouldn't rattle so much pro tip and I actually got some uh, Caliper grease and put it on the hitch it seems like the best lubricant that I actually have um, it was very squeaky and very rattly on like the two mile trip back to the house. So hopefully my 800 mile trip is not going to be uh, that annoying. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to pick up my brother Randy. He's going to come with me on this trip, kind of just be here for moral support. And uh, you know, if I need to move the trailer, I need help getting a bike on and off the trailer, he's going to be able to help me out, which is great. So I'm um, going to pick him up and we're going to start this adventure. Um, so as you can tell, you can probably tell, there's a lot of clunking going on back there. Um, I think that that's just kind of part of what happens when you have an unloaded trailer, and this trailer is already tiny and light as it is, so. Unfortunately, I think we're just going to have to deal with this clunkiness. It's not squeaky though, you didn't get to hear that part, <laughs> but it's not squeaky anymore, which is like... 80% of what I wanted to accomplish that was just ungodly annoying oh my god if I had to deal with that forever I don't know what I would do put in some earplugs or something but uh, yeah I think it's about as good as we're gonna get unfortunately hopefully it's a lot better once it's actually loaded and has a little bit of weight on it but uh, I think we'll be able to overcome it with music or something but uh, just one of those joys I guess <laughs> well, I have Randy here with me. Um, I guess we're just going to have to get used to the clunking. I just double checked everything just to make sure it was all set up properly. And it is. It's just the pintle moving around in the receiver. There's not really a whole lot I can do about that, unfortunately. But uh, it looks like it's calculating that we're going to have 16% battery by the time we hit the first supercharger. I'm hoping that it adjusts to be better than that, but I think I'm going to just set the cruise control at like 66, 67 miles per hour and we're just going to see where we're at on that. So we are here at a Tesla charging station shortly after we left because apparently it's going to be at negative 4% by the time we get to our first charging station. And uh, so we got to do a quick little charge and uh, you know it's not exactly pretty. pretty oh, okay. But, um, you know, luckily there's nobody here because we got to park sideways. But, um, <laughs> you know, oh well. This is so ridiculous. <laughs> All right, as Randy said, um, we kind of, we didn't run out of battery or anything, but I was trying to make it a further distance before we 
had to stop and charge and it was calculating that we would like be just shy of having enough battery essentially so um, we're having to stop a little bit early to kind of like top up a little bit so to speak <laughs> right now we're at 64% it's honestly cutting the efficiency down quite a bit and this is a little bit inaccurate because uh, I was just going really fast trying to turn around to get to the supercharger so definitely did not care about efficiency we were hovering right around like 450 460 which is seems a little high all things considered I was hoping to be more around like 400 watt hours per mile um, the whole battery has like 77,000 watt hours essentially and we're basically using like half of a kilowatt every mile which is like a lot but um it says that we only have 11 minutes left to charge back up to 90 percent so we're gonna go grab some food really quick and then we're gonna hop in and make it the rest of the way to the supercharger that i wanted to go to in the first place <laughs> Okay, so we are in Quartzsite. This is the place that I wanted to be originally. And this supercharger is just way faster than other ones. We've only, we only actually had it here for maybe like 10 or 12 minutes and it was charged enough to make it to the second charger that I wanted to go to. So um, I might just let it charge just for like a couple more minutes because I'm not sure if I have the right destination on there or not, but it's saying that with our 86%, we would, hit our next destination with 33% battery. So I'm gonna mess around with that a little bit before we take off again. But so far, everything's going good. Trailer's making its typical clanging and banging noise and nothing new with that, so that's always good. Um, we're about halfway, I think, something like that. So <laughs> Randy doesn't third think so. <laughs> yeah. Somewhere between a third and a half, I don't know. But we're getting there. Oh, it's your side that's loose. Well, yours is also all the way. <laughs> well, we got here. Um, not here. We got the bike. Um, and we made it about 120 miles back towards the house. Um, it definitely has some cosmetic stuff. The most, not most notable being this piece that goes under the seat is broken. But otherwise, like if you can ignore the cosmetic stuff, <laughs> the bike appears to have been taken care of pretty well we're gonna have to kind of do some straps here redo some straps looks like this one is, is that did you just undo it because look how low the strap is on the rear wheel <laughs> so we're gonna have to fix that but overall it looks like the bike is pretty stable we used the uh canyon dancer weird name it's pretty sturdy i mean it probably could be tightened down more but i think we're good <laughs> but just really happy to have this thing there's a couple little things i want to do to it before i get it out on the road but overall i think it's going to be a sweet little bike oh my god it is 12 30 in the morning and i'm at the last charging station to get home and it is going ungodly slow at charging right now but a little bit longer I'll be able to make it drop off the trailer drop off my brother and I'll be done it's just been a long friggin day oh my god alrighty then <laughs> that was quite a bit of a trip and it's actually about two weeks later right now I was so tired after that trip I just literally had to sleep for like two days it's just I could not recover but anyways I'm back here in my somewhat cluttered garage and I've actually 
I've been doing a couple things to the bike already, just trying to like get it sorted out and everything. I was having an issue first with the battery. It turns out the battery was just low, needed to be charged up. I have verified there's no draw on the battery and the battery is charging, so that's good. And then I was having some issues with the idle not wanting to stay put, so I had to find a spring for this like idle adjustment cable and put a spring on there. Hopefully that fixes it and then that'll be pretty much the only issue. I have ridden it around like a little bit, just maybe like five miles or something, not very far. But um, I guess this would be my something of a reveal. <laughs> Actually having it home here, but as you can see, it is partially disassembled. Um, I'm basically waiting on an air filter right now. It's got an old one. It looks like it's seen better days. I tried to clean it up a little bit. It didn't really clean up very well. So I have a new one on the way right now. You can also see that I took the brace off of here and the mirrors. And I already, when I said my garage was cluttered, I wasn't, I wasn't joking, but, um, I took the brace off and I repainted it and everything. So this looks super fresh right now. Um, I also got some mirrors from Amazon. I think these are like 30 bucks for the pair, but they're like ZX9 style mirrors. And they actually look pretty cool on there. But uh, I'm gonna wait to put them back on until I get some of this stuff figured out. I got the idle adjustment cable back in here that I was talking about. I've gone through a little bit and just whatever I see I'm putting on a list. Um, one thing that I'm gonna do tomorrow is this harness right here is just in really bad shape. The clip's broken on this side. These wires going into it are barely in there at all and just kind of looking like crap. Looks like there's some old repairs that were tried. somebody tried to do on it. Um, there's also a repair right here. They try to crimp on uh, like a new wire to an existing ground going to the harness over here. So I'm gonna redo that too, just to be safe. Other than that, it's pretty much ready to go. Uh, I'm gonna start riding this thing next week and I'm picking the absolute worst time of the year to do that. It's like, what is it, the first week, second week, of May and it's like 95 degrees every day right now so picking a really good time to use this as a commuter. I did do a quick repair I guess you, you could call it on the tank. Um, there was like a bunch of this like heat resistant tape or like like a barrier that barrier tape crap I don't know what the heck it's called it looks like fake crappy um, like carbon fiber or something. But anyways, there's some of that stuff on here. It looked weird, it was asymmetrical, made pretty much no sense. I think it was really to just kind of hide some of the crappy paint that was underneath it. So I peeled it, I'll show you some pictures um, that I took with my phone of the process. I didn't record any of that with my GoPro, but um, <clears throat> I got that just looking better. It doesn't look great. I just wanted to do something temporary because it just looks so bad and dumb, so. I did that really quick and it looks a lot better. There's a couple little things like these rubber pieces. I just found um, that at the hardware store. It fits like perfectly, so that's nice. The old ones were just completely shot. <clears throat> and it was the same thing with the uh, brace. I found like new rubber pieces here. Found that at the hardware store. I do have a new windscreen on the way also. It's a clear one. I think it's a double bubble, kind of like this, um, but it's clear. And then I got some like lime green, green, ugh, I can't speak today. <laughs> I got some lime green vinyl wrap that I'm gonna do the whole thing in. It's just gonna be like super 90s looking, but I'm kind of just leaning into it, you know? It's, it's got the Buzz Lightyear color, so might as well just lean into it. Alrighty, I have the new, the new old filter. <laughs> I, I actually bought a used k and filter, believe it or not. They don't make them anymore for these. I believe they quit making them a few years ago. And uh, yeah, you're either gonna have the final one used like I did, or um, I don't know, they have the stock foam filter still. And then there's like a aftermarket one that's basically the same thing. I think there's another company, it's called like BMC or something. And they also make a couple different filters that are pretty much the same thing as the K&N. 
But anyways, long story short, I got it all put back together and everything, uh, kind of wiped down the bike. I think that I worked out pretty much all the major issues. Um, I don't know. I, I have some fuel system cleaner in here too uh, to try to kind of just like clean clean up some of the gunk in the carburetors. Ethanol gas is not nice to carburetors. They are not friends. So I'm kind of just running a few tanks of that stuff through here and in hopes that it'll just clear up the rest of the way. Um, but so far so good. I don't have any like bucking or hesitation or anything like that. The RPM does want to like hang a little higher and then like eventually come back down. So I don't know if that's like a vacuum leak or if it's something with the carburetors or if it's just like a normal quirk on these engines. But you know, I am I really like focus in on stuff like that probably too much. <laughs> so um, I'm kind of just, uh, I don't know. I'm getting there with this bike. I feel like most of the issues are pretty much worked out at this point right now. So I feel good enough about commuting with it. <sighs> All right, guys, I'm not even gonna lie to you. This bike has been way more work than I thought it was gonna be. I feel like I got, um, not necessarily lied to, but uh, I think some information was purposely left out. I think that the previous owner, from the sounds of it, like I wish I would have gone into more detail earlier in this video, but um, this bike, I believe it sat for a long time by some guy in California, his original owner, and then the guy that I bought it from was the second owner, and he kind of like tried to get a lot of this stuff back together. Um, there was uh, a ton of stuff that they fixed. Um, there was one carburetor that had like a bad bank or something, one of the, just one of the separate carburetors. They took it off, got the whole carburetors gone through, which I found out was probably true later on. But um, they went through the carburetors, did the brakes, did a lot of fluids, changed sprockets, um, did a, actually a, quite a bit of work. Um, they do have like a work order that they gave me among some other things. And I have like a whole box of just old parts that came off of this, but um, it needed some serious work. Turns out the carburetors were clogged or the pilot jets were clogged at least. I'm gonna try to get some parts down really quick here. So I actually got this thing sort of running and then I had like fuel, fuel starvation issues and all kinds of crazy stuff. Ended up changing the fuel pump. I think that that may have been part of it at least. Got a new fuel filter in there. I changed some fuel lines. Um, I did a lot of just stuff. Uh, changed the oil. I checked the spark plugs. I ended up getting um, hydro lock on this one time by leaving the petcock open. So I found out really quick that I need to be really careful of that. Um, oh, and one of the major problems was this right here. As you can see, um, this has JB Weld all the way around it. So somebody was into this already, but this is the CDI box, uh, controls the ignition for the spark and all that stuff. So this, I think, was a huge factor. I ended up getting a decent used one on eBay for like 100 bucks, and Ever since I did those big things, it's actually been pretty good. But yeah, it was a ton of work. And just for uh, reference here, I did get that clear windscreen and I ended up getting this paint. I can't remember what it is. It's like Krylon stained glass paint or something of that nature. Doesn't look too great. Um, it was a little too hot to be spray painting. Should have just waited till it was cooler outside or something. Now it's like 118 degrees outside today, so that sucks, but everything has been pretty good after I got a couple things sorted out. I've used it to get to work a few times. I also think I forgot to mention that there was actually a broken piece of plastic on this tail section, like from here forward. So I just found a decent used uh, matched piece off of eBay, found that and threw that on there really quick. The bike definitely needs some cosmetic work here and there but I think I'm just gonna do that at some other point when it's not like a million degrees out here in Arizona. I would like to get a lot of these little scuffs and stuff taken care of. I've heard that the aftermarket Chinese fairings are not very good, so I'm probably just going to end up taking all these off and just repairing them, stripping them back down, and then repainting them um, at some color. I don't even know yet, but there's quite a bit of work to do on this bike, but so far everything is pretty good. But since we haven't done it yet, um, we'll do a quick video of it running.
also just to wrap up things like on the actual trip with taking the tesla and everything um we were just super tired and it was really exhausting just you know kind of being attentive with the bike and everything so i didn't really cover quite as much as i wanted to but the tesla did pretty well all things considered um i think it cost about a hundred 20 ish dollars for um supercharging it at the charging stations there and back and it was about 800 miles everything totaled in and all that so it really wasn't that bad um sometimes there's like that one station where it took a while to charge and i'm not even really sure why that was but all the other stations that i went to it took like maybe five or ten minutes to charge from pretty much you know like eight percent battery all the way back up to eighty percent so people that are saying, oh, you gotta sit there for an hour and wait for your battery to charge and all that, they just, they don't really know what they're talking about. They obviously have never done a trip in a Tesla. If I didn't have the trailer that was extra weight and that gate was up, basically acting like a parasail the whole time. Um, if I didn't have that, you know, the bike and all, all that stuff, this really wouldn't be that bad. Uh, I would have been able to make it a lot further on a charge. I probably wouldn't worry about, um, you know making sure i have more than enough charge because of the weight of the bike and how that calculates into everything so it really really wasn't that bad i would feel totally fine taking this car without hauling something all the way to california and back no problem but i just wanted to get that out there it was pretty cool um the trailer thing drove us freaking nuts with how loud it was the whole time but uh every, everything was cool it was a cool experience back to the bike though um i have been using it to get to work here and there thankfully i have a good friend at work who's been <laughs> letting me uh carpool with him because it's just insanely hot and i don't really want to ride a motorcycle unless i have to i have been taking the javelin also um that's over there on the side of the house but uh i have been taking the javelin but i've been also running into some more issues uh there was i'm trying to remember what it was first oh yeah I had, a, I had a valve cover that was leaking so then i got these different valve covers on it and then um the new valve cover gasket was leaking then the other valve cover was leaking it was just big stupid ordeal with that and then i get it running again and then the first day that i bring it to work and back um the power for my electric fans like melted into my battery so it's down right now and i pretty much just have the bike at the moment so um, i'm kind of just taking it easy on the bike for now but when it does get cooler i have a couple trips that i want to do and i can hopefully hopefully i'll make some videos about those experiences also but i do have some plans for the javelin also i want to get the fan controller um, there's an aftermarket fan controller it's pulse width modulated super trick stuff but I'm gonna get that on there pretty soon and uh, hopefully be able to drive that for at least a while. And then I'm gonna do EFI. So EFI is the next big thing that I'm gonna do on the Javelin, but that's not gonna be for a couple more months. I know the channel's been a little slow, guys. Um, it's just hot right now. I don't wanna work on anything and I definitely don't want to record and edit videos right now. It's just, um, I'm not having a good time working on things right now. <laughs> But uh, thanks for watching this, guys, and uh, take it easy. Till next time. Later.